God bless you. I am Dr. Courtney Pope. And I am Pastor Audrey Pope. And you are watching Living, Living Devotions. Devotions. And we thank God for you. Yes. And as always, for the opportunity yes. to open the Word of God and share it with you. Amen. It's so exciting to be able to come before everyone each week and just to go through God's Word because it grows us, it matures us, and it allows us to get to a place in God where we need to be. So we thank God for this opportunity. Pastor, let's go into prayer Amen. so we can get into the Word. Yes. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you for this is the day that you have made. And you sh we shall rejoice and be glad. Thank and you, thank Lord. you for this moment, this time, and this opportunity, yes, Lord. Lord, I ask that you would use this Word, Lord God, to touch the hearer, Lord God, to grow them, to mature them, yes. and to stretch them. Yes. In yes. Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Well, we have a lesson that should be a blessing to our uh, studio audience, Amen. as well as those who are watching and listening. Pastor, just forgive me for saying I'm a stickler about your beauty. Listen, we can't, <laughs> can't have nothing interrupting the glory, <laughs> but we just honor the Lord. We yes. honor the Lord for this opportunity. Yes. And let's thank our studio audience. Come on, clap your hands and make yes. some noise. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Amen. Because, you know, people talk about, oh, we want to be in the studio when y'all record. Well, you have to show up, <laughs> you know. But we thank God for uh, this generation yes. that's really clinging to the Word of God. And it encourages us, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Uh, we want the audience to know you encourage us when you show up in the studio. Yes. Because we don't know when you watch. Right. We don't know if you're watching. We don't know, <laughs> we don't know when you watch. But we yes. thank God that when you're in the studio, it, it encourages us yes. to, to pour and to know that we are doing uh, what you need from your leaders. Amen, amen, amen. 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 So today we're going to look at a few scriptures, but I have a little, little, um, little message that um, I could preach it, uh -huh. but we're going to go ahead and try to teach. We're going to walk through it amen. and teach this thing. Amen. So I want us to first look. We're talking about your body, your life. Your body as the temple of God. Okay. But but we're going to use some, we look at a lot of HGTV. Uh -huh. For what reasons, you know, but the pastor's working on something. But we look at a lot of HD, HGTV. So today we want to talk about flip this house. All right. That's all right. We want to flip <laughs> the house. Amen. Amen. All right. So now, now those of you outside of the spiritual, if you need someone to come in and do some interior services, I'm your man. You want to call me to flip your interior. But, uh, <laughs> but in the spiritual, right. we want to flip this out. So we're going to look at a few things. Okay. Um, we know in the Gospel of Mark chapter 3 and verse 27, I'm not going to read it because it's common knowledge by now, but I gave the reference so people uh -huh. can look at it. But in Mark chapter 3, verse 27, Jesus says, that um, you cannot enter into a strong, strong man's, man's house, house right. without first binding the strong, the strong man. man. Yeah. And a lot, you know, and, and you know, you can look at that different uh -huh. ways, but you have to read the scripture in context yes. and not just the way we preach in the black church and you just take one, one right. verse right. and make it mean something that does not connect with the whole chapter. Yes. So Jesus was uh, refuting with the, or answering religious. the uh, religious leaders, yes. the Pharisees, because they accused him of 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 operating. of operating under the spirit Satan. of Satan, yes. and yes. Jesus said, "Well, how can Beelzebub okay. cast out Beelzebub?" Okay. And though, so he went into the example, or the the example rather right. of you cannot enter a strong man's yeah. house right. and and rob it unless you bind a strong man, then you rob it of its goods. Right. Right. So right. Jesus said, "I'm not here." To, uh, I'm not casting out Satan by, by the power oh, of Satan. Satan exactly. I am here and I'm binding the strong man yep. who has occupied this house. Yep. I'm binding him and I'm taking out the goods. Yep. Everything that belongs into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. We're talking about your life, That's your right. gifts, your talent, That's your right. call, That's your right. anointing. Yes, yes. None of that should be under the rule okay. of the enemy. Amen, amen. Then... Amen. Then, because we're working our way to something, uh -huh. then, and that's Mark uh, 3 and 27. Right. Then in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 uh -huh. and verse verse 19 and verse 20. And you know this also, but uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19, Paul says what? 
don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. That's good. That's good. You are not your own. You belong to God. And that helps all of us to keep our passions, to keep our bodies in in check, in check, in check, in alignment with God. Because we're not our own. Amen. And Amen. if we were our own and did not have the Holy Spirit to really control uh -huh. and dwell within us, we will all be loose. Amen. And, we I, just, will be and loose. I feel, Bishop, this is pertinent just to, to say, read the 20th verse. For God bought you with a high price. This is New Living Translation. So you must honor God with your body. Yes. You know, I was going to read that I'm verse. Sorry. But no, it's still the, <laughs> it's nothing to apologize for. It wouldn't be... It wouldn't be living devotions with Doctor and Pastor Courtney and Audrey Pope if we didn't if we didn't have our real moments. For yes, you are bought with a high cost. Uh huh. And we're not our own. We we belong to God, and we must glorify God and honor God in our bodies. So, okay, I want us now to look at the the verse that we're going to teach from, and that is Psalm twenty six. Okay. Psalm 26. And Pastor, you know where I'm about to go. Notice I did not say those of you that are ministers. I did not say the 26th division of Psalm. Right, right. Because there are only, there's 150 uh -huh. Psalms in the book of Psalms in your Bible. But there's only five divisions. Uh -huh. Every right. Psalm is not a division. They're Psalms. Right. A division is a category. Mm -hmm. So your first division of Psalms deals with one category, your second deal with another category, your third deal with another category, your fourth with another category, then there's your fifth. Uh -huh. And we know one of those categories is the Song of Ascent, yes, where yes. They, they would sing those particular songs yeah, the as they the went up the steps into, or went up to Escalator Hill uh -huh. to go into the temple, which is on Mount Zion. Yes. All right, let's Teach let's Dr. Pope. Come on. Mm -hmm. So, so um, those of you that are in ministry, you know this is what you long for. You don't just want to huck a buck and shout. You want, you want to have knowledge, mm -hmm. knowledge of the word of God. And I love pouring into the next generation. Amen, amen. I love pouring to those that have an ear to hear. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about flip this house. Uh -huh. Now we're going to look at the life of David okay. here in this psalm. Now remember, we gave you two reference scriptures, uh, Mark chapter 3 and 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You know those. Right. But now we want to look at David and make it, bring it home, make it personal, yes. so how we can apply it to right. our right. lives. Right. Because, I, Pastor, now you know I wrote a book on David called um, In Search of a King mm -hmm. Among Sons. I was waiting on the audience to bail me out there, but you at home, I'm sure, did. Uh huh. Uh huh. You said, huh? <laughs> anyway, I, I heard the huh all the way here in the studio. But we look at David, and I don't think we do David justice right. because. In the modern church, we treat David the way we treat each other. That's true. That's we will true. praise you while you're doing good. Yep. Then we will bury yeah. you yep. while you're doing bad. Yeah, it's true. There's like no grace. There's, no grace. There's nothing in yep. between. Yep. And let me just give this footnote. We love to go there with David because we know his sins. Right. Because they're recorded in scripture. And it wasn't just with Bathsheba. That's right. All right, but we know his sins. Mm -hmm. But Paul... Right. Mm -hmm. Outside of Jesus, the most celebrated person character in the New Testament yeah. said that he was the chief among sinners. sinners. Amen. Amen. And said that three times he went to God about Praise. a thorn in his That's flesh. Right. That's right. And God said, my grace is sufficient. That was the only answer he got That's from God. Yep. God still gave him revelations and all of that. And Paul said, but Lord, I have this thorn in my uh -huh. flesh. I'm tired of it. And God and Jesus said, my grace is all you need. Yep. Stop yep. focusing on that. And my here's my take, Pastor. We bury David because we know what he did. Uh -huh. David was not under the dispensation of grace. Mm -hmm. Come on, ministers, yeah. you taking notes? He was not under the dispensation of grace. Amen. Peter, excuse me, we know Peter's issues. Right. But Paul, who called himself the chief among sinners, who the church called the chief apostle. Hello. But Paul said on his own uh, his own uh -huh. conviction, I was the chief among sinners. Uh -huh. And we just told you about him having, praying to God about a thorn in the flesh three different times. Uh -huh. And the only answer he got from the Lord Jesus was my grace is sufficient. Right, right. My grace is what you need. We don't know all of Paul's uh, issues that's it. That's because it. grace that's covered it. it. That's it. We know all of David's issues because he was not under the dispensation of grace. Amen. So to come down to your brother and sister in Christ right now, the day that you live in, 
when you know that there's fault, the Bible says uh -huh. that under the grace dispensation, yes. cover them. Yep. That's it. Cover them. We don't do that. We, we, you we cover them and you restore them, them. Yep. with the spirit of meekness. Yep. Why? Because number one, number one, no one deserves to go to hell. That's right. No one. Yep. I don't care who the, the the rapists really don't deserve to go to hell. Right. They don't, and the, and the victim didn't deserve to be raped. Right. But hell was not created for people. That's hell right. was created for Satan and the fallen angels. That's it. That's so it. why are people? Why are human souls yep. in hell? It should not be because it was never created for that. And that is why the scripture says hell enlarged it's itself it's daily. daily. Because right. now you, the, the fallen angels already condemned there. Yet remember, Satan is loose yep. right now. Mm -hmm. But there are some angels, yep. fallen yep. angels, bound. that chains. are bound in chains, chains in darkness, in darkness yep. right, now, right now. While yep. other yep. demonic spirits, yep. fallen angels, yep. are yet to be bound. Yep. But they uh -huh. will be. Yep. And so will Satan. Uh -huh. But right now, those spirits are loose. But what did those that group of angels that, do? Yeah, that they are in bound chains. in chains and they're living eternity in darkness. You have to remember these are created beings that beheld the glory of God. That's right. Nothing but light. Uh -huh. Now they're in nothing but darkness. darkness. That is a torment, torment to someone that's created to behold the light of God. That's it. That's it. My God. My I don't God. know if anyone's that's getting this that's is crazy. deep. That is, this is heavy that stuff. Is crazy. So let's go. We have a few little things we're going to walk you through. I just, I'm sorry. I just got to respond to that. You know what I'm saying? He said to restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. You know why we need to be meek? And I need the church to hear this. We need to be meek because you're not far from that same Ooh, sin. It could have been you. You could have been you. That's right. We want to always or, bury somebody or expose them. Or it was That's you. Right. right. And a lot of times. The problem the, is we just didn't know that it was you. You knew about me. As long as you, you went know? to. Here's the thing. That's it. You've done wrong. But as long as you went to God. That's what people and ask the Lord, that's forgive it. me, that's take me right. back, clean me, wash that's me. Right. I don't want to go ahead of the God, lesson. But as long right. and thank you. That's as it. long as you go there before God. See, a lot of people, when they finally hear about it, they don't know you and God got that record straight Jesus, way down the road. For ago. some people, in my case, years ago. ago. Uh -huh. But now it's fresh to you. Yeah. That's how you have to watch your humanity. Yep. And, and watch your mentality that you don't get caught up with the trick of the enemy. Because there will always be people that need to repent. Now, and that's and we should repent daily anyway. That's right. and that's because you could have just had a wrong right. thought. You could have right. maybe the Lord wanted you to do something you didn't do. Just repent. We always say repentance means it's the worst thing you ever no. did. And don't forget, repentance means just changing your mind. It's the best thing you've ever done. Repent. That's repent. That's it. All right. So, so all you're doing is changing your mind about what you did, and you should feel that remorse. Pastor, I feel like a series amen, coming on amen, here amen. because we're, we're, maybe we'll pick up what we're, where we're at now yes, after this. Yes. But we're talking about flip this house. So we're going to walk through David's house. All right. All right? Yep, we're going to walk it. through not his physical house, but we're going to walk through David's house. Let's now, we have to understand we're going, through, we're going to read from Psalm 26. There are 12 verses, but I'm not reading all 12 verses, all right? But we have to understand that David's life needed to be flipped. Uh -huh. David's life, just like me, just like you, our lives needed to be flipped because, in David's case, one, he committed adultery with uh -huh. Bathsheba. Uh -huh. Two, he caused the death of Bathsheba's husband, Uriah. He Three, he conspired he all of that. Yep. Four, he re he was rebuked by the prophet Nathan, mm -hmm. but he, as king he didn't go have the prophet exiled right. or killed. Uh -huh. He got up when when Nathan said to him, "You are the man. You've done wrong." Mm -hmm. David got up. I like to say, got up off his throne. Then uh -huh. took off his royal garments, yep. got in sackcloth and ashes, and laid before, before the, the Lord. Lord. And from there we have the infamous. 53rd Psalm. Yes. Good God Almighty. Yep. Yep. All right, so he had to, he was rebuked. So whenever you're rebuked, there's something you did wrong. That's it. Five, he had to repent of his sins and confess his guilt yes. before yes. God. Yes. We read that in Psalm 51. I said 51. Psalm 53. Yes. Psalm 51. Yes. All right, and then uh, God took the life of that first child yes, with David and Bathsheba. But that wasn't the only sin. That's right. David counted it the Israel, and God didn't like that. 
He had to repent for that. That's and God gave him one. three that's choices. Right, right. Do you want three was it three months of your enemy running over you? Uh -huh. Or David's ego of a champion? Right. No way. Uh -huh. Because his enemies would love that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Or, or there could be three months of pestilence in the image. Yep. Went on, I'll give you the scripture. Yes. But um, David chose for God his mercy. Yes. He looked for God's mercy yes. on his life. Amen. So, and, they, and these are just the ones we know about. That's right. That's I can right. take you the day when David first brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. Yep. Yep. The Ark shook. Yep. Uh, the man took out his uh, hand yep. to stop it. Yep. And the glory of God killed him right there. David got that's mad that's with that's God, that's stopped the processional, and said, take the Ark of the Covenant Obed, over there in that house, yeah. over in that, in yeah. Obed-Edom's house. Yeah. David did not go worship or nothing. Yeah. He was mad at God. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know you can't be mad at God, and, and, and God is pleased with that. No, so, so David's house had to be flipped. So you know the story of David. What's your story? Yeah, that's it. What that's is it. your story? So let's look at the first thing we need to look at, Pastor. We're going to look at verse 1, Psalm 26. Uh, and if you see anything, you're reading from the New anything that uh -huh. jumps out, go there. Mm -hmm. But in verse 1, David says, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slide. Therefore, I shall not slide. That's good. That's good. Just read that from the New Living, verse De 1. Declare me innocent, Declare o Lord, me innocent, O Lord. For I have acted with integrity. Yeah. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Yes. So what David is going to look at verse 2. He says, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Put me on trial, Lord, and cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart. Test my motives yeah. and my that's good. heart. Yes, that's oh, good. Oh, now here's the thing, Pastor. Uh -huh. David is writing this after uh -huh. he has come back to a place in God. Uh -huh. And you have to get to a place in God where you say, that was that. My that's foolishness, it. It. that nonsense. What the some of the young people call that foolery? Yeah. I thought that was just a southern thing. Uh -huh. But that foolery, that foolishness, that uh -huh. messiness, yes. you got to say that's behind me now. I, 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 my flesh got caught up into uh -huh. something uh -huh. that I know is not good for my spirit. Right. To the flesh, hey, right. hey, <laughs> that's the Lord. Good you know, to my right. flesh. Right. But I have to please God. Yes. I have yes. to please God. Yes. Do it, Lord. Yes, Do it, Lord. Hallelujah. Have to please yeah. God. Yes. So David is now on the other side of, of repenting, the other side of not living right, mm -hmm. the other side of living beneath the standard yes, of God. Yes. And he's saying, now God, let's meet again. So Bishop, what did they No, no, no. Okay. Let's stay right there for a minute. Okay. He's saying, God, let's meet again. Yes. Let me come to your table again. I'm ready now. I'm ready to talk. Yes, Before yes. I, I've hid yes, from you. Yes. I hid from you, but I'm ready now. Uh, um, I was just saying that hindsight is twenty twenty. We learn sometimes our vision is clear after we go through the process. Wow. After we make the wow. mistake. After we make after the mistake. After we failure. make the mistake. That's then it. we realize, wait a minute, this is wrong. But that's it. See, that's a lot it. of people want to bury you because they say, How could you do wrong? But sometimes some folks just have to learn the hard the way. way. And when you it. do, but don't keep learning that's the it. same lesson. hard lesson right. the hard way. That's right. That's right. If, if, if you found out that a bee stings, somebody told you that. They said, don't mess with that rose bush because bees over there. Uh, well, I think I should find out for myself. That's what a general, that's we've right. been told that. Yeah. I think I should find out for myself. Well, that's foolishness exactly. because wisdom and knowledge shall, shall be, be the stability of, of your time. Minds. When you listen to wisdom, yep. it saves you time. Saves you it time. saves time on your life. Yes, it does. Amen. Amen. Oh, my God. So David is on the other side of what he went through. Mm -hmm. And what he went through was immorality. Mm -hmm. So this first room uh -huh. within David's life yes. was immorality. Yes, now, crazy. I'm trying not to be long-winded, but there's something here we can look at theologically. Uh -huh. David said, in sin did my mother conceive me. And we made that a doctrine. Yes. But scholars, theologians, uh -huh. are arguing right now that what David could have been referring to was that either he was a child out of wedlock, uh -huh. because we read nothing of David's mother uh -huh. until uh -huh. David is in the cave of Abdul, uh -huh. 
And it says that his mother and father came to him and all and his family and all those who were in distress, who were discontent and in debt. Uh -huh. Don't it sound like today's church? Yes, it does. In distress, discontent. <laughs> God, Lord, speak over God. Distress, discontent, and in debt. Right. But, we, but I preached a message from that passage years ago. And Holy Temple, it was one of our yeah, top selling uh, right. CDs uh -huh. or, or uh, tape cassette. And that was You're Just on Hold. Yes. With God Almighty. Yes. David was in the hold. Yes. And the sermon was You're Just yes. on Hold. But I think yes. a lot of people bought it because on the cover of it was a handsome black man. So a lot of the sisters would get the tape because yeah, of the cover of the message. Just on hold. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's a word. Some of y'all still have it. There's a brother and he's on the phone. He's on hold. And, and folks were buying up sisters. For, but it wasn't a DVD. And, and it wasn't that handsome young man. It was this handsome young man preaching the word. All right. Wow. Amazing. And the studio audience, <laughs> they laughed and said, say, go ahead, Bishop. <laughs> you handsome, Bishop. <laughs> I know you're right. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Pastor said, I know you're right. All right. We got a visitor in the uh, studio. So, <laughs> so somebody bought somebody. That, that visitor didn't pay a ticket. All right. So th that first room that David had to clean up was the room of immorality. Mm -hmm. So if, if his father, Jesse, had something on the side with another woman, hence the birth of David, hence why David was not invited when the mm -hmm. prophet Samuel mm -hmm. came to anoint mm -hmm. Jesse's son, out of Jesse's son's right. eight king. Right. There's a reason why David was not brought in, and his mm -hmm. appearance right. is mentioned in detail in yes. scripture. Yes. And so that must mean there was a difference in his appearance yes. than his uh, brothers. Yes, yes, that's good, Bishop. That's Somebody good. in the studio say, wow. Wow. This is wow. knowledge, okay? Yes, it is. This is not revelation, it's knowledge. knowledge. Mm -hmm. And you need in, in learning the word of God, you need the knowledge and the revelation. That's it. Right. Then you leave the lesson with the power. That's it. That's good. Knowledge, revelation, and power. I hear you. You can you can say amen or something. Amen. All right. So so that first thing was immorality. Could it have been that this is in David's bloodline? Uh -huh. Could it have been mm -hmm. that generational curse? Uh -huh. Now we're not excusing David. Right. We're not excusing David, mm -hmm. but the Bible lets us know that when David said, I think it's 2 Samuel chapter 11, mm -hmm. verse 1 says that in the time when kings went to war, yes. David stayed in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. He went out that night on his rooftop, and there he saw Bathsheba bathing. You may say, well, what's wrong with that? And why would she be on the roof? Because in the ancient why? world, that's where they bathed. If you wasn't down at the river, you were bathing on the top of your roof, which is only but so high yes, anyway. Yes. So you were there. That was private scene. It was away from anyone else. Mm -hmm. All right. And then being in, 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 um, in the vicinity of the king's palace and being that uh, 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 Bathsheba's husband was Uriah, he was one of David's uh, great warriors. Right. Then we understand that then the homes around the king's palace would be preferred people or yes. people of status. Right, that's good. So this that's wasn't good. just a common neighborhood uh -huh. if I'm not offending anyone there. Mm -hmm. So David had to clear clean out his room of immorality and that same, now look what he says. He said, uh, oh Lord, I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in you. Therefore, I shall not slide. Examine me, O oh Lord, and prove me. Uh -huh. Try my reins and my heart. Yes. Test me is what the Test New Living said. Test my heart. motives. So he's saying, God, let's do this again. Uh -huh. I did mess up. Uh -huh. I've repented. Yes. And now, Lord, I'm ready to be the son that you want yes. to use. Yes. 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 Come on in yes. here. Amen. So Amen. he cleaned up the room of immorality yes. and, and restored it to yes. a room of integrity. That's good. That's good. That's good. Come on, no takers. That's good. That's good. He cleaned up the room of immorality, yes. threw out the nonsense, uh -huh. and he fixed it up with the uh -huh. room so it could become a room of integrity. That's good. That's Somebody good. say, That's flip this house, Lord. This house, Lord. Come on, studio audience, flip this house, Lord. This house, Lord. So that first room became a room of integrity. The second room, let's look at verse 4. Uh -huh. The second room, he says, I have not sat with vain persons. You wait till you read the New Living, I already uh -huh. did. Uh -huh. I have not sat with vain persons. Neither will I go in with uh, dissemblers. All right. Let's see. Verse five. I have hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. That's good. Uh, verse four says, I do not spend time with liars or go along with hypocrites. Hold on. 
I do not spend, spend time, time with, with lies. lies. So some of y'all think I'm acting new. <coughs> <laughs> if some of y'all think I'm being a little distant, uh, I do not what spend time with, spend liars, time with liars or go along with hypocrites. Or go along with hypocrites. Right. Because if I come on, uh, because if I hang with the hypocrites, that's gonna make, make me look like a hypocrite. Right, right. I want you to get saved for real. That's it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we got that, right? Yes. Yeah. Let me just read verse five. I hate the gatherings of those who do evil, oh. and I refuse to join in with the wicked. Mm, wow. So I'm not going to hate the person right? because I need to be a light to them. Uh -huh. I need to win them to Christ. Right. And if I really like, even in the relationship, if I like a person that much that's not saved, I need to live so right. that my life can be a light and an example flip to them. Flip, flip their, their life. life. Flip their life. Flip their life. Because if I can flip my house, that's right. you can flip, flip yours. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. 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 Come Amen. on now, flip Amen. this house. I tell you, this that's thing right. can preach. Amen. Amen. This thing can preach. Yes, can. But when we flip this house, <laughs> when we flip, I mean, the preacher's in the room now. I got a male and a female in here. I can pass the mic to either one of them. Right. And I got the other one saying, I want to turn too. So <laughs> right. they might say, you know that old saying, I want a piece of this. Uh, I might have to preach that one. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to go there. But right. I, I preached a message one time. I had to give a disclaimer. Yes. I preached a message, and it was a good message called, Do You Want Some of This? Uh, but I had to give a disclaimer first. Right. <laughs> Y'all go ahead and laugh. Uh, but it, go ahead. I, I know, I know. Uh, but I preached, Do You Want Some of This? But I told the congregation, before you look at your neighbor. Right. Before you look at that and repeat what I'm going to say, you need to horror. clarify you are talking spiritually. Right, right. The horror. <laughs> the relevance. Right. Because I preach to a generation. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody, everybody can do this. You know, I'm just keeping it real. No, I, I am real. Right. Yeah, right, right. I'm real about my weakness, real about my faults, real about my strength, real about my progress. Uh huh. Right. And when right. I'm real, and that's what keeps us together Amen. as a church. Come right. on in here. Amen. That's what keeps us together as husband and wife. Right. Keeps us together as parents uh -huh. because we're not that fa facade of leadership. That's good. That's good. We're, that's we're good. not. We're not. We right. talked about a few weeks ago. We're not the leader boss, the leader dictator. Right. We are the leader CEOs. The the leader right. shepherd, That's the right. pastor shepherd. Right. We're with the That's sheep it. and we lead the sheep. Right. So in the second room, David had to uh, uh, change it from a room of pity and sorrow oh, uh -huh. of what he did. You know, your guilt can really mess you yes, up can. as well yes, as it should. It yeah. As well as it should. Uh -huh. Now here's the thing, and, and God knows I want to run through this because we have six rooms. We're on yeah. the second one. Hang in here. You, somebody thought we was going to have three rooms. Your, if your house only had three rooms, don't invite me over. I know, that's right. <laughs> it's too small. It's too small. There's only three rooms in your house. Right. And it got quiet in the studio. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Shotgun house. <laughs> yeah, shotgun is the, Where we at? Where we at? Oh, that's over. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, it's a house, right? Okay. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> um, David. Uh-huh. Had to clean up from his sorrow, yes. from the guilt. And I said, when you feel guilty, you should. But your guilt should lead you to repentance. That's right. And once you have repented, honey, don't let the devil make you feel guilty. Romans 8 and 1. Yes. There is therefore no. now, now. No. no condemnation right. to them who are in Christ, Christ Jesus. Right. You are in Christ. Your yes. life is hid with God in, in Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Or with Christ in God. Uh -huh. With God, God in Christ. Christ. That's it. With God in Christ. Your life is hid. Mm -hmm. Let go of the guilt and tell the devil, the only way I'm going to feel bad is when the Holy Spirit convicts me. Uh -huh. Not because devil, you condemn me. That's right. There's That's a right. difference between the devil's condemnation uh -huh. and the Holy Spirit's conviction. That's right. Condemnation makes you feel bad and feel like you can never, never. ever... Get, get right. Store, but conviction right. says, you know you're going the wrong way. Uh -huh. Get back in that's your right. place. Right. Oh, God. Y'all don't right. feel Amen. that in here. Amen. Pastor, I, you that's know what happened Amen. the last time? I know, I know. We I know sat here shame. in the studio and the Holy oh, Spirit. Yeah. Oh, God. Wow. The Spirit of the Lord came in this room. And, I, and maybe that's why we have an audience today. Because they say, I want some of that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. See, they laughed when I said the first time. Now they understand. Uh -huh. Do you want some of this? Amen. Come on. He's ready to bring it. He's ready to give it to you. So here we understand that we can trade our sorrow 
and it be, and make it a room of joy. That's good. That's good. For right. the spirit of, of heaviness, heaviness. That's right. he will give you the garment, garment of praise. Yes. Yep. Oh, come on here. We're Amen. giving you nothing but Bible. That's it. I know Amen. you want points, but I'm giving you Bible. Amen. Amen. So that first room, David changed the room from immorality to integrity. to integrity. The second room, he changed it from sorrow to, to joy. joy. Let's look at verse 6. Verse 6, David said, I will wash my hands in innocency, so will I uh, compass your altar, O oh Lord. I will come to your altar. You need yes. to read, it, read that verse. I wash my hands to declare my innocence. Yes. I come to your altar, O oh Lord. I come to your altar. And verse, the next it's verse says, with, with singing. Singing I, I know, song in the, Thanksgiving. Yes. I'll come to you all. Now I can approach you and be glad. That's it. Now I can approach you and feel good about my life. Uh -huh. I can yes. approach you knowing, God, that you are pleased with me. And I'll approach you with my bow down and say, Father, please forgive me. I'm your child. Uh -huh. Lord, I didn't mean right. it. I can come to you now with lifting up holy hands. Yes, yes. The Bible says lift up holy yes, hands without wrath. And so That's we can it. now come in with the confidence we have That's this it. assurance and this confidence that we can approach the That's throne it. of God. Amen. Bishop, that scripture said we can come to God without wrath and doubting. And why why doubting? Because we don't have to doubt that we have been forgiven. Yeah, when yes. we come to him, mm -hmm. when we approach God, mm -hmm. we don't have to doubt the fact that am I really forgiven? No. I, if God says I he's forgiven, really you, forgiven, you are really, you are really, really forgiven. forgiven. Yes. yes, you Amen. are. And Hallelujah. forgiveness is not a feeling, it's that's not a it. quick no, thing. No. It's an assurance. It's, that's right. It's based on the work that Jesus already that's did right. and based on you acknowledging that you that's were wrong. Right. Everything about God is a knowledge. You have Whoa. to know oh, the yeah. word of God and how it pertains oh. to every aspect of your life. God is knowledge and you got to know. Wow. So you don't have to come to him doubting no. Wow. That you can come to him freely. Yeah. Because you are his beloved. You have been accepted. All right, all right. Amen. I know. No, because you want to get, because I, 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 I Pastor, I want to open that door. Yes, I want to open yes, that door right yes, there, but yes. that this lesson is going to turn if yes, I do. Yes. But you say God is not, no, God is, not, everything about God, God is knowledge. knowledge. Good yep, God Almighty. Yep, yep. You know I, I want to touch that so bad. I want to get there and give God glory yes. for all of that. Everything about God is knowledge. Amen. Wow. And he brings joy. Come here. I, we want to introduce somebody on the camera. Come over this side with Poppy. Come over here, baby. <laughs> because everybody does not see our in the studio audience today. We have our youngest grandbaby, Carson. This is Carson Pope. And we thank God. Say hello, everyone. Look at the camera. Yep. Hi. Did y'all hear her say it again, baby? Hi. There we go. And, and you want to sit here with Poppy and Nani, or do you want to go sit back over there? I want to sit here. Okay, so you have, to, you have to pay attention to what we're doing, okay? Okay. Now, this is our little musician in the making uh -huh. and dancer in the making. She's already performed on stages, and now she's taking piano lessons mm -hmm. and all of that. So um, I, I, somebody must be jealous because now we got something to make us look good. They're giving me a signal now. The time is running out. Yeah. Well, I take you, Susie Borden. <laughs> I'm surrounded by God's love. Look, look, just beauty. I'm just surrounded by beauty on both sides. So we have here, we have, um, he went from sorrow to making it a room of joy. And now when we read verse 6, we, did we read verse 6? Yes. Yes. So now we find out that David has taken a room that contain uncleanness, uh -huh. his unclean ways. Uh -huh. And he has uh, flipped that room to now become a room oh, of cl man. cleansing, a sanctified room. Uh -huh. Your body, your life must be sanctified. Am I right about that? Say, show sure enough, Brett Pop. Sure <laughs> I want to speak like a big girl. Uh -huh. All right, so now let's look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, Lord, I have loved your ha the habitation of your house. And the place where your honor dwells. That's good. So verse 8 reads, I love your sanctuary, Lord, the place where your glorious presence dwells. Did you hear that? Read that again, Pastor. I oh, love God. your sanctuary, Lord, the place where your glorious presence dwells. Yes. So here we have David is flipping the room that 
uh, contain his love uh -huh, for, for, for the wrong pleasures. For wrong pleasures. Uh -huh. You know, you don't sin unless you've been enticed. That's right. And you and the Bible teaches us that you're enticed by your own lust. Uh -huh. You can't blame the devil. You can't blame him. You can't blame her. You. you can't blame them. It's all you. Uh -huh. Amen, church. Amen. All right. <laughs> we do wrong because we choose to do wrong. That's so right. it's all a That's choice right. thing. It's a choice, yeah. it's a choice thing. I want to share something because I just ministered this uh recently at perfecting place and i want to throw something in here pastor that i did not incorporate in the notes prior to uh -huh. now uh -huh. but i want to uh go here uh let me get to those notes uh let me get to those notes got everything going here but my notes call myself taking a shortcut here we go uh -huh. so we have to understand that uh, uh that here david is talking about a change uh, a, a challenge, rather, uh -huh. to take an uh, honest look at himself. Uh -huh. And we have to take an honest look at ourselves and with what we call our own personal Christianity true. or our salvation. Our flesh, this is where I wanted to go. Our flesh is nothing but unredeemed humanity. That's good. So when we choose wrong desires and uh -huh. wrong intent, make wrong choices, uh -huh. we have to remember God placed Adam and Eve in the, in, in the Garden of Eden. You want to uh -huh. get down? All right. Well, I don't know if you're in the camera anymore, right. baby, but uh, but uh, we're going to go on. All right. So let's give Carson Pope a big hand. She wanted to stand, but I think you know stars. They, you know they only have so much time if they're not being paid or they're not the top <laughs> biller. You know, billing. Then you know. Right. So we'll just be the the, the low men on the totem pole. Right. But we have to understand that what um, when God placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Uh huh. Everything was there. Yeah. Everything that for their use needed. and including the one tree that they were not to touch. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. one thing, tree that they were not to eat from. But it's not the fact why would God place it there. It's the fact that God allows you choices. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And what the Holy Spirit wants us to do is to choose right and choose God. wisely. Yes, that's good. That's choose good. right and choose wisely. Mm -hmm. So David took a room where he had love for wrong desires, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, his sins in the flesh, yes, his attitude and yes. all of that, wrong pleasures, wrong desires, and it became a room with a room that was concealed with love for God's house. That's good. That's oh, good. That's good. what? Yes, there are some of us that we love coming to the house of the Lord. Amen. We thank God for the virtual media and uh -huh, all of that, uh -huh. but there's nothing like Dancing and praise the Lord along with you yes, in yes. a house that is set aside. That's right. Uh, Butch Hayward wrote a song called uh, We've Come to Praise Him, recorded by the Institution Radio Choir. And let me see. Uh, in the lead, it says, After tolerating these spirits, in, uh, and this is Vincent Bohannon's mom on the lead, okay, uh -huh. for that generation. Uh -huh. Or for that generation, Vincent. The infamous Vincent Bohannon's mom uh -huh. is the one leading the song. And she says, after because she was a member of the radio choir, after she, her lead was, after tolerating these spirits in the street, uh -huh. it's good to know that I can go to the house of no defeat. This house, talking about the church, uh -huh. is set aside where we may enter in to relieve our attention from this world of sin. So that is why I know at Holy Temple. Uh -huh. Why we shout hard. Uh -huh. Why we praise long. Yes. Because we are relieving ourselves. Yes. Good God. Yes. Those of you that are home. And all you're doing is on Facebook. Putting every. I'm sad. I'm going through. I'm mad. And all people can do is say. Hang in there. I'm praying. Honey. Stop doing that. And come to church. Get, Get in the word. Get a praise. praise. Right. Don't you know we all feel that That's way. Right. We all have That's uncertainties. Right. We all have questions. We all have doubts. We all have fears. But after tolerating these spirits in the street, it. it's good to know that I can go to the house of no defeat. That's it. That's it. Because Holy Temple, the perfecting place, whatever your church is, yes. have been set aside where you may enter in mm -hmm. to relieve the tension. Yes. Of this world of sin. That's Go to church and get your praise on. Amen. Stop Amen. sitting home and say, I just sleep later on Sundays. We went over that a few lessons ago. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, I sleep better on Sundays. And do I have to go to church all the time? Uh -huh. And I can watch it on virtual media. Uh -huh. The devil is a liar. Okay, right. That right. is the option. That is not... <laughs> That is the, the, the standby. Uh -huh. That is not the go-to. Right. You go to church, not right. go to your electronic device and That's have church. That's right. 
All right. Mm -hmm. So he goes here. He leaves his uh, concealed room of of lustful desires, uh -huh. and he has now flipped it into a room of where he conceals his love for God's house. Yes, yes. It's, it's not even just concealed; it's expressed yes, and all of yes, that. Yes. We got two more rooms. Let's look at verse nine. Verse nine. It says, gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with, with bloody men, in whose hands, verse 10, uh -huh. is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. Don't let me suffer the fate of sinners. Don't condemn, don't condemn me along with murderers. Their hands are dirty with evil schemes, and they constantly take bribes. See that? Remember what Psalm 1 says, the first Psalm? It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not, not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate both day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. But the ungodly, Psalm 1, are not so. But they are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. How do we know that? Because Bishop Williams taught us that when we were young people in summer camp. Hallelujah. So in verse, uh, uh, in, in this verse, verses 9 and 10, David flips his room of blaming others. Uh -huh. Because, uh -huh. you know, I don't want to be with them. And that's what I, happened to Isaiah. Right. Isaiah chapter 6, when he saw the glory of God yes. in the temple, he said, woe, woe is me, me for I, I am unclean. Done. I am unclean, I'm undone, undone yes. something. I'm just wrong, right, you know. Right. He said, but I dwell among people with unclean lips. He says, and, and because I dwell with people like that, I, I do like that. that. Yep. I talk anything. I gossip. I lie. Uh, I ridicule. I criticize. Mm -hmm. And it. God says, mm -hmm. give that up. And David flipped that room of blaming others to a room of blamelessness. That's good. That's good. <laughs> blamelessness. Mm -hmm. That he will present you faultless yes. before his presence. That's your Bible. That's it. God, Jesus want to present all of us faultless, faultless blameless mm -hmm. before, before God. Amen. And our final room is in verse 11. Uh -huh. Verse 11 to 12. But as for me, David speaking, I will walk in my integrity. Didn't he start that way in verse uh -huh. 1? Right. He, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. Mm -hmm. My foot stands in an even place mm -hmm. in the congregation while I bless the Lord. Amen. But I am not like that. I live with integrity. So redeem me and show me mercy. Now I stand on solid ground and I will publicly praise the Lord. Yes. So he flips that room of sin uh -huh. to a room of redemption. And integrity. A room of integrity, redemption, and integrity, yes. living in the fullness of the presence of God. We pray that you have been blessed by this word. Examine yourselves. Uh, uh, the, the first room, flip it to a room of integrity. The second room, flip it to a room of joy. The third room, flip it to a room of cleanliness. The fourth room, flip it to a room of a love for the house of God. The fifth room, flip it to a room of blamelessness. And that sixth room, flip it to a room of redemption. Mm -hmm. Our prayer for you is that you will grow, grow in grace, grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and, and Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. Christ.